Hello. Hello, is that Robert? Hello, yes, Robert speaking. Hello there. Um, we were just, we just calling from one of the mosques. You called us about um, some questions you had about the Quran. Yes. I can't pronounce the second name. Gloucester Gugul Mosque? Gulsia. 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 I beg your pardon. I wasn't able to pronounce it. OK. Yes. Um, thank you. Yes. Th thank you very much. No problem. You're welcome. We've got two of my colleagues with me. Right. Uh, one is the uh, Imam of the mosque. Yes. I'm his deputy. Yes. And I've also got um, uh, another brother, Asif, from uh, the committee of the mosque, OK? That's absolutely fine. Um, but I do remember I did ask for notice, you know, like... Um, five minutes is not really giving me notice, but I can happily speak. OK, that's yeah. fine. I mean, if you feel feeling comfortable, that's fine. Or if you want a preliminary chat, that's fine. No, if no, you want I, to come I can... Back with more questions, I can, I can, I, I can go ahead, but it means that if you're going to say in five minutes, it means I've got no time to prepare. You see, okay. and the three of you have. Um, anyway, um, the first question is Surah 18, verse 86. And this okay. is about Dul Kwanain. If, if my pronunciation is wrong, please do, do correct me. I'm, I'm happy to learn. Um, who I believe is Alexander the Great, mentioned in verse, verse 83. And it says in Surah 18, which is... I'm reading from the extremely, um, the, the cave surah. Um, this is the Dr. Muhammad Musan Khan version, translation of the Quran. And it's very confusing because they don't number the um, chapters. They don't number the chapters, it's just called the cave. Okay. So as I'm going through the Quran, I'm having to put the numberings at the top of the page. I am dyslexic, and things like this I find really difficult. Anyway, well, um, Surah eighteen. You should, find, you should find at the top of the page where the where the name of the surah is. There should be a number after no. that. Is that that not the case in your... No, no, it just says part one, part two. Um, Surah 18 is part 16, not part... Yeah. So yeah. it... <laughs> OK. And then uh, it uh, goes on towards the end, up to part uh, 30, I think. Yeah, the Surah 18 is, um, is um, spread over part 15 and 16. It's too, it's too confusing. <laughs> I'm dyslexic and I work in a certain way. What and it is, the, the Quran, because it's a big book and children read it and everything, mm. because so it's divided into 30 equal parts, which is called, which is the part numbers. Mm. Okay, so it's like small, 30 small books. And then you've got the chapters within that, which, which are the surahs. Right. So we've got 14 of those. Well, well, I am numbering them as I'm going through. I've numbered okay. this 18, so that's something that, that's the way that my mind works. I, I, am, I am dyslexic, so um, I, I, I find that extremely difficult. Anyway, Surah 18, verse 86. Thank you, sir. Um, until when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of black, muddy or hot water. And he found near it a people... We Allah said by inspiration, O Du Kwanain, and if I pronounce that wrongly, correct me, either you punish them or treat them with kindness. So Alexander the Great, Du Kwanain, he was looking for um, somebody. He, he went to the east and he found the place where the sun set in a black muddy pond or black muddy water, different translations. Um render it slightly differently but I mean I'm a bit shocked the sun is a million miles wide it has a circumference of over three million miles it wouldn't fit into a muddy pond oh. okay <coughs> okay then Okay. 
Right. The, the thing um, I'm mm -hmm. just um, speaking to Imam Saab here. Yes. Um, it's, it, it's talking about a faraway place as in the horizon. So some of the things uh, sort of like um, referred to in context. So it's not literally where the sun is setting into a muddy pond, but it's a faraway place in the west. Yeah. The Maghrib is west. Um, uh, so it's a faraway place over the horizon. You know, like in English story, you said over the horizon and far yes. away. Yes, I think that's a song, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of reference um, that it's talking about. And um, uh, it's often named Alexander the Great. Uh, it's not Alexander the Great, by the way. Prophet. He is a prophet. He, he is a prophet of uh, Allah. I see. I see. Okay. Um, in the Hadith, and I cannot give you the references because although I've been reading, I haven't had any time to prepare because you said you'd call me in five five, five minutes. Um, in the Hadith, this has been taken literally for 1400, nearly, you know, for 1400 years. It's only in this generation that people are now saying, oh, this is not literal, this is symbolic. But, you know, for 1400 years, Muslims have said, you, you take this verse literally. It literally sets in a muddy pond, and that's what the Hadith says, the Hadith of Bukhari. Bukhari <laughs> Um, it's mentioned in the book of Revelation, yes. Yeah. Gog and Magog. So, th these are the people um, that Zulkarnain actually went towards. He was guided to find them. And what it's saying is over the, I mean, over the horizon and faraway place where the muddy pond is, that's where you will find the people that he was looking for. Right, Gog and Magog, you, people normally say it's to the north, sometimes say, some people have said it's to the east, oh. um, but the sun sets in the west, not in the north or in the east. Yeah, yeah, no, if you actually look, mm -hmm. to the extent when he reached the setting place of the sun, yes. Maghrib, so the word Maghrib is the west. Oh, uh, a setting place would be, I'll just write this down, it's... That's you're saying. Setting place is yeah. is Mus Musk. You say that again, please. Maghrib, Maghrib. M U G. M A G H. R I B. R I B. B B for Bertie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's that's extremely helpful. I, please thank the Imam for his his patience and his um his help. I have some other questions. What what is so talking about the thing is um, the the other thing that the Quran refers to is two easts and two wests. So depending on which side of the earth you're on, the mm. sun will always rise from the east and set in the west. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the opposite side of the world, it will appear as though the sun is still uh, the, the the west on one side will appear as the east on the other side. Yes, yeah? but the setting for the Quran would be the. Um, claimed in the Middle East, it would not be in Japan or China. No, no, it's just a direction. It's All not right. a plane. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. It's not. It's nothing to do with Europe, Asia, or anything like that. It's. It's just the direction. The the pole directions. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Th thank you very much. And any response to the Hadith? I cannot give you the reference. The, but the Hadith consistently, not just Bukhari, but Hadith Muslim and the other Hadiths, they all take this verse literally. They, they literally say for four, you know, and Muslims have interpreted this until this generation or always interpreted this verse 
Surah 1886, literally. The Hadiths interpret it literally. It's literal first, sun. I have to, I have to see the Arabic text. The basic, the problem is that first I have to see the Arabic text. Without Arabic text, I can't translate. I can't, I can't, can't yes, sir. give the uh, opinion about that. Because sometimes uh, people think about uh, the translation or the transcription which you are reading about, it is concerned with very importantly that what type of translation and what the thing is being discussed. And mm -hmm. all... all and context I have to see without uh, 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 next time uh, we can also consider any uh, 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 tomorrow or uh, day after tomorrow whenever you find uh, time uh, uh, give us the reference I will also sort it out because yes. it is a, which, uh, uh, everything is being elaborated and uh, no problem at all we can see that but first I have to see the Arabic as because the uh, essence if you want to read the translation mm -hmm. about Quran or Hadith First, I have to see the Arabic text, so that's I, why. Uh, that's that's quite quite understandable, sir. I I, I can um, understand that, um, and I can speak any day except for Monday. All I ask is give me at least a day's notice of a precise okay. time. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, another verse that puzzles me: I've noticed the marches in London um, at the weekend. They've been shouting from the river to the sea: Palestine will be free. Uh, now, I'm not saying all the marchers are Muslims, they're not. And I'm not saying all the marchers believe um, bad things of the Jews, but some are using this saying to, to claim that Muslims should be driven out of Israel. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And some of the marchers, I'm not saying all of them, say, well, you make Palestine free by killing all the Jews and only the Muslims can have the Holy Land or Palestine. And I'm not saying all the marchers are saying that, but that's what some of them say, mean when they say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. The Jews have no right to live in Palestine or Israel or the Holy Land. Um, the second verse is Quran chapter 5, verse 21. But I'll read from verse 20. The context is Musa, Moses, leading his people through the wilderness. And then in verse 21, it says that Allah has given he, my people, and that's Moses, Moses' people, the Hebrews. I mean, I, you, we usually refer to them as Jews, but Hebrew would be more technically right. Um, he's given them the land of Palestine. So if Allah has given them the land of Palestine, what right do protesters or Muslims today have to say that they should be expelled from the land? I'm, I'm not accusing any of you three gentlemen of saying this, but that is what some of the marchers and protesters in London are saying. The Holy Land needs to be a Jew-free zone. Well, it shouldn't be, according to the Quran. Let me read it, Surah 5, 20 to 21. And remember when Musa, Moses, said to his people, O oh, my people, remember the favor of Allah to you when he made prophets among you, made you kings, and gave you what he had not given to any other, the Alameen, mankind of the jinn, and your time period in the past. Here it is, Surah 5, verse 21. O oh, my people, right, that's Moses' people, enter the Holy Land, Palestine, that's in brackets, so it's not in the Quranic text, it's what Khan has interpreted, which Allah has assigned to you and turn not back in flight, for then you will be returned as losers. I believe the state of Israel um, has a right to exist. And I believe that the state of Israel is correct in saying that there are many Jews who are members of the state of Israel. But I believe it's about 10 to 13 percent of Israel are Muslims. And then there's Jews in in Israel, and many members of Israel are, are atheists. So according to the state of Israel, Jews, Muslims, atheists, and Christians should share the land. Now, I, I do not agree with some of the extremist Zionist sects who just want the land just for themselves. I disagree with that. And I disagree with some of the actions of the state of Israel, but obviously I'm horrified at what happened on, on October the 7th when over a thousand people were killed and some babies were put in ovens to be roasted alive. I'm horrified. So could you please help? Surely the Quran is saying at Surah 521 that the people of Moser, that's the Hebrews, have a right to the land because Allah has given the land 
of the Holy Land to Israel, so they should not be driven out. And the next, uh, which you have just read, the ayah, that's the verse 21. And now read verse 22 and then 23. Yes. They said, O Moses, uh, in it lives a very strong nation and we shall never enter it until they have gone away from there. So when they have gone away from there, we will enter it. So two men who were among all of those who feared Allah and whom Allah has had favored said, enter upon them by force through the gate. If you enter the gate, the tree will be yours and depend only upon Allah if you have faith. Basically, important thing is that that was uh, Musa alayhi Islam Moses. He asked his all his followers and Bani Israel to enter in that place in Palestine and make jihad with them. But they were afraid of Tom uh, Jabari. What they have said, Jabari. Jabari means a very strong nation. Uh, they they have a very uh, long heights. They were very tall heighted people and everything. Uh, there is m uh, many relations in Hadith. In whole of scenario, if you see, if you calculate all these uh, years, which Banu Israel uh, led their life in Palestine is not more than 100 or 150 years. I'm just giving you a third party opinion. Uh, if you mm -hmm. see all these uh, uh, things in the scenario and in the history, uh, and Quran by itself, uh, it stated that they were not even after they were punished 40 years in the land and they were in a circle when they start the voyage and they start their traveling and so what happens uh, uh, when they travel all all day and at night when they slept and uh, when they woke up again they were on the same place and Hazrat Musa and Hazrat Yusha bin Nur they both passed away in in that era 40 years because of the, it was a punishment basically because they were yes. not uh, uh, willing to enter in that place. So how uh, if, if uh, just uh, as a person uh, judge it if a person uh, as the Musa al Islam saying that uh, Moses is saying that go in that place in Palestine, fought fight with them and take the place. They said no no no, nahnu ha huna qaidun. We are sitting. Moses go, you go, and your Lord go and fight with them. So a person, if he doesn't want to fight with them, how can he claim that, that this land, this land belongs to him? It belongs to them. Well, because in Surah 521, O oh my people, that's speaking to Moses and the Hebrews, enter the Holy Land, Palestine, brackets, yeah. which Allah has assigned to you. So Allah has given the Holy Land to the Hebrew, to Moses and the Hebrews. Now, because of punishment they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years we'd have to go to the bible for that and and um all of that generation died because of the punishment i think it was except for joshua and caleb i think there were two exceptions but um it says here i mean my position is that the jews have a perfect right to live in the holy land they should not be driven out because here in the quran Allah gives the Holy Land to the Muslims, which I believe they should share with Christians, Jews, Christians, Muslims, and 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 also atheists. If you, if you look at Jerusalem, uh, the main um, the Dome of the Rock, the main mosque there, which was our place in, when when prayer first became compulsory upon the Muslims, that was the direction that the Muslims faced. No, and our, that's no. After Yes. No, it was uh, Petra. It was Petra. The early Kibla directions, Dan Gibson did some research on this. Uh, it is a lot more complicated than this, by the way, because more research has been found and it's very, very complicated. But it seems that the early Kibla directions faced Petra, including the K mosque of the two Kiblas in Medina. The earlier mosque direction was to Petra. And the Umayyad Palace the ruins of the Umayyad Palace, which is quite near to Petra. Um, the Qibla wall, which has the niche in it, so we know it's the Qibla wall, that faces Petra. Um, so I don't think it faced the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock was built, correct me if I'm wrong, in about 690-something. Was it 692 or 695? And it's built in an octagonal... Um, it's it, it it's it's an eight-sided building, 
it's built it's built very strangely although it's been rebuilt many many times um but the eight-sided octagonal design is in the um tradition of a byzantine church these things have been rebuilt over yes. time yes many 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 times yes as has been the Kaaba in mecca that well i'd say the Kaaba in mecca there's a there's a plaque I forget how many miles outside of Mecca it is. Um, that's from the 690s, and that says that the um, in about some time in the 690s, I think it was 695, sometime around then, that's when the black stone was moved to 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 Mecca. It doesn't say where it was moved from, but many scholars are coming to the opinion that it was Petra. It was moved from Petra, and Islam was originally based, um, or it developed, around the region of Petra, not Mecca. Mecca didn't even exist as a city. Uh, in Bukhari, in Muslim, uh, many are uh, narrations in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, quoted that, that uh, Hajri Aswad, it is called the Black Stone, it came from the Paradise. And uh, it is just not only the stone, it, uh, it is the very, uh, it was the very first stone which was, uh, came to earth with, uh, with Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Salam. Adam, with Adam alayhi salam, and uh, Eve, when they came on earth, that, uh, that Kaaba, basically the building was uh, first uh, uh, being built by the angels, and that, Hajar Aswad, it was like a black stone, it came from the paradise. And not only, it, uh, it has a very brief history in our um, uh, um, books, that the, the very first oath, which Allah Rabbul Karim took from Allah Almighty, took from all the prophets, and, the, um, and they assigned that we are going to be the prophets, and we are going to uh, take oath that we are going to take, uh, we will declare your oneness and prophecy of the, uh, every prophet in his own time. So that contract also been hidden in this rock, in this black stone. Well, it is not uh, coming from Petra. If you think, uh, uh, first, uh, 1400 years ago, uh, as you see, um, Bible and they have uh, different modifications. Bible has, uh, before that, it has 400 versions, but now it has four. No, no, you need to, you, uh, you, you, you need to make, you, you, you've made several points. You made a point about the Hadith. Mm -hmm. You're, I can't respond to multiple points. You need to make yeah. one single point. I think that's fair. Uh, yeah. You, you well, mentioned... First of all, to some extent, uh, because it was the very when we tried, they were following that Qibla. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when came uh, 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 in this world, in, uh, uh, and he uh, first uh, he was praying the mass towards uh, Baitul Maqdis, and he also put that Kaaba in front of him, but in Medina, as you mentioned, that Qibla thing. But basically. Before Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, what was that? Before Banu Israel, because it is very first started from Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam. Can you Sayyidina slow down? Can you, can you, can you uh, slow down so uh, I can follow you? Uh, you need to uh, speak slowly. And, and all these, those prophets, those who are coming. And she was from Jacob. Jacob, yeah. Yeah, Jacob Yaqub alayhi salam. And Ishaq. Can you speak slowly, please, so I can follow you? It's not a race. I'm trying to follow you. No, no. What he's saying is all the previous prophets that came, Isaac, whom we call Ishaq alayhi salam, Jacob, Yaqub alayhi salam, and uh, which other one? Hazrat Yaqub, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Yusuf, and Joseph, Yusuf alayhi salam. And uh, Suleiman, Solomon alayhi uh, salam. Um, so all these, all these um, prophets actually used Jerusalem, the um, Dome of the Rock, basically, as it, their point of direction. Um, the Dome of the Rock was built in the 690s. I think it was 692 or 695, sometime around there. So it did not exist. The Dome of the Rock did not exist before that. And the octagonal design is that of a Byzantine church. If you say too much, sir, I can't take it in. I can't really respond. Well, uh, the other fine. gentleman also mentioned the Hadith of Bukhari, he said, Bukhari said this, that, or the other. Um, Bukhari is completely unreliable. The Hadiths are completely unreliable. 
Um, the Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, is probably going to be changing um, Wahhabi Islam um, and doing away with, with the Hadith. The reason for that is that Western scholarship has now looked at the Hadith and because it's so late, it's 250 years or more after um, Mohammed supposedly died in 632. Because um, Bukhari wrote two and a half thousand miles away, north of Iran in Bukharistan, and he wrote over 250 years later. What he has to say is completely irrelevant. It's, it's not a historical fact at all. It would be like me saying, I know that George Washington, the first president of America, was a three foot tall dwarf with purple hair. And I've got, you know, I've got this um, narration from uh, George Washington's sister to George Washington's grandson to, to his friend, to her friend, and then to this, to that, and then to my uncle who told it to me. Now, I live in the year 2024 in England, about 250 years after George Washington um, died, uh, perhaps a little bit more actually and I live about two and a half thousand miles from America what I have to say is completely irrelevant about George Washington if you want to know about George Washington you go to the people who lived with George Washington and you look at the historical record if I produced a book and called it the Hadith of George Washington with all these traditions about George Washington being a three foot tall dwarf and I've got all these narrations that so-and-so told, so-and-so told, so-and-so told, so-and-so. It's irrelevant. It's of no historical value whatsoever. The Islamic world is, I think, uh, rapidly beginning to reject the Hadith as completely unreliable. Perhaps that's a different discussion for another time. Uh, I'm certainly not an Islamic scholar. I'm just looking at Islam. I'm finding it uh, very interesting. Sorry. Thank you. And now I just want to interrupt here. Yeah. Uh, you uh, said that Muhammad bin Salman. First of all, the person you are talking about, is he a scholar? No, he, he is no, no, I'm just, you no. have to quote his name, that uh, he, uh, he want to do that, he wants to do that. First, because I am, uh, I have done uh, my specialization, uh, uh, this is my, like, this is uh, a whole of my life I spent in Hadith. And I spent years and years in Al Azhar University, Cairo. Yes, sir. So uh, the most important thing is, uh, I just want to elaborate that Imam Bukhari doesn't wrote only these things by himself. In the reign, in the time, in the era of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there is many narrators were there. Our mother, Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu taala anha, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's wife, she was also a biggest narrator of hadith by herself are you and saying aisha did you did you say aisha, aisha? yeah yes. it is in Arabic, it is aisha uh, uh, and uh, uh, imam abu hazrat abu hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala abdul rahman al dawsi it is his real name he wrote and there is uh, musannaf ibn shayba and there is mushaf uh, 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 Mus musnad ibn humam and there is a, these, um, uh, which I'm telling you the names of this book, these books were written in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So after, when the time was passing and Khulafai Rashidin, the Caliph, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, Umar Farooq, and Hazrat Usman, and Hazrat Ali al Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala, after Sayyidina Ali al Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala, uh, because of the wars and different other things which was happening, uh, Yazid came and all these things. At that, in that scenario, at that time, all of the uh, the literature, Hadith literature, was were being driven by their modifications. So at that time, people gathered and they have been consensus, even though they were. Uh, if if somebody says that Hadith doesn't exist and how they can narrate. So we can't rely on Quran because the base of Quran is Hadith. Because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "What I am telling you, this is Quran." Um, uh, Abdur, uh, just uh, uh, finish me uh, yes. uh, first. Uh, finish this thing, then you can. Uh, uh, there's only two sentences left. Hazrat Abu 
Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala, he was sitting in front of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, and he was writing by his pen in front of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, what are you writing? He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, whatever you say, what is coming from your lips, I am writing it down. Once companion came to, one companion came to Abu Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala, and he said, O oh, Abu Hurairah, why you write everything? From Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sometimes he is angry, sometimes he is in happiness. So moods, different moods, every every person has. So he stops uh, writing uh, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw that there was a Abu Rada radiyallahu alaihi he was not writing. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked Abu Rada, "Why you are not writing? Before that, I saw you. You were writing everything." He, uh, he told all the story that oh, the companion. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Wama yantaqu alil hawa." As Quran narrates that, that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam doesn't say anything except Allah Rabbul Karim revealed on him. So in the time of Prophet Muhammad bin Salman says, Muhammad Salman is not an authority. First, the scholar, even Michael Hart is there. I know that. A, uh, uh, my uh, and other those uh, because I have driven many books. Uh, even we were using the books of the Western scholars, those who have uh, extracted the and some of the hadith. Sorry, who is even the we? In their books, they, uh, they have given who, us the, who, uh, who is the, the we? Uh, sorry, you said we. Who is the we? You need to slow down a bit and perhaps reference uh, what you're saying. Sorry. Is this at Al Al? I can't pronounce the name of the university in Cairo. I know it's the world's top Al Islamic. Al-Azhar Al-Azhar. 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 Al Al-Azhar University. H-A-R. Well, That's the main, yes. the big Islamic university in Cairo. It's, it's the main Islamic seat of learning in the world. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, wow. <laughs> I have so many books there. Uh, the authors, though, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, these authors were from the Western world, and they have uh, uh, elaborate, extracted the hadith by their way in uh, from A B to uh, from A B C. So uh, the words which are starting in a Roman English, and they have uh, translated all those things and many of the things. They have also mentioned that the muhaddisin, the narrators. They have even you talked about Imam Bukhari. Once Imam Bukhari went to uh, to take hadith from very uh, he traveled a long distance to took that to take that hadith from a person who was a narrator. And he saw that he was uh, uh, his horse was ran he ran away from him. So what he has done uh, he just uh, pretend that he has a grass in his. Uh, uh, in his hand. So what happened? When he, Imam Bukhari saw this, he said, no, I'm not going to take this hadith. So he said, I have hadith. He said, no, when a person, if a person can deceive the horse, he can deceive me. So it it was the caliber of Sayyidina Imam Bukhari. And Imam Bukhari, he by himself narrated that I learned by heart 300,000 uh, narrations of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But so he, who did? Who did? Yeah, sorry? Who oh. did? The person who wrote the Bukhari. The You're Imam saying that B- Bukhari's Hadith is hmm. a present nine-volume edition. That only yeah. appeared in the 1600s. Yeah. B- Bukhari uh, was is... handed oh. 600,000 Hadiths, and he immediately rejected most of those he only kept 7000 hadiths so i believe there are 7000 hadiths in the present nine volumes roughly roughly yes. 7000 7000 yeah. uh, that uh, this is the uh, basic problem some of them they, th- they thought that that all, all those hadiths which imam bukhari uh, learned 300000 hadiths were rejected they were first uh, I have, uh, there are many discussion and uh, uh, the caliber of hadith. If a person, we see uh, 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 scholars, they thought that, that the person has a little weakness in his memorization, we call that hadith da'if, that it is a weak hadith. So if weak hadith, is there is one weak hadith and from other companion, the other hadith comes there, so that hadith is going to be lifted on the uh, uh, on on upper level and
and we are going to consider as hadith sahih or hadith hasan. So, there are many yes, there's three grades of hadith. hadith. Yeah. Sorry? There's three grades of hadith. Yes. Um, uh, Sa'id, Sa'id um, I believe, is the strongest um, strongest yeah. narration. Um, yeah. The tr I trouble is... Most of, what's, most strong of them is called Mutawatir. Yeah. What, what's happening today is that, unfortunately, um, you asked me, is... is um, um, I, uh, well, the name of the Saudi prince, Bin, bin Muhammad, Salman. Muhammad, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, is Bin Salman a scholar? No, he's not. But yeah. Modi of India is not a scholar. Mm. Donald Trump is not a scholar. Mm -hmm. And Keir Starmer is not a scholar. Keir Starmer is the leader of the Labour Party and almost certain to become the next Prime Minister. Now, all of those politicians have very, very strong things to say on Islam. And will be changing our changing those four societies. Um, Bin Salman wants nothing to do with Hadith. He seems to be a. Um, frankly, many people are saying he's a non-Muslim. Uh, whether he is or not, I, I I don't know. Modi, the Indian leader, hates Islam, and has pulled yeah. down thousands and thousands of mosques around around India in an attempt to destroy Islam in India. Donald Trump. Uh, probably uh, he introduced a ban from certain Muslim countries, and I'm sure that if he gets back into power, that will be reinstituted, and there'll be more forceful things said against Islam. Uh, if Keir Starmer becomes the next prime minister later this year, he is probably going to make this conversation a criminal offence for me, because any criticism of Islam, according to Keir Starmer, should be dealt with with a prison sentence which is absolutely insane even to discuss at an academic and a fair level. I mean, neither of us are swearing at each other or cursing each other. I wish the best for all three of you gentlemen. And I'm very honoured that I'm speaking to um, a graduate from the most prestigious Islamic university in the world. So, you know, I'm honoured to speak to you, sir. Um, you. But despite that, <laughs> in, 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 in a year's time, I could be facing a prison sentence for having this conversation and disagreeing with you. Not because effectively all. he's going to make disagreement with Islam a crime. So a lot of Islam, uh, sorry, a lot of religion is mm. influenced by politics, whether you like it or not. OK, um, um, I can give you many, many ex ex examples of this. Um, the King James Bible, beautiful translation of the Bible from the Greek and Hebrew into English. But Hebrews 12, 4, the passage reads Passover. Wait until the Passover. King James didn't like that. King James wasn't a scholar. He didn't like the Jews. He probably owed them money. So on King James's insistence, the King James Bible is the only Bible that reads Easter at Acts 12.4. Purely for political reasons. It's got nothing to do with what the original Greek text says. It's political reasons. And what I think happened in the case of the Hadiths, and particularly the Hadith of Bukhari, was that it was subject to political uh, interference from the Abbasid uh, dynasty. Just as Modi is interfering with Islam in India, if Donald Trump gets back into power, he will interfere with Islam negatively in America. And if Keir Starmer um, um, gets into power here in the UK, he'll be putting born-again Christians in, in, in prison by the thousand because no one's going to be allowed to criticise or discuss or debate Islam. It will be a, a subject not open for discussion. You'll just be deemed a racist if you disagree on any level. And it's all politics. And that's what happened, I think, with Bukhari. It, it, was, it was simply um, when the Umayyad dynasty fell, they needed a new type of Islam. And that Islam was the one promoted by the Abbasid dynasty, who moved the Black Stone to Mecca as the plaque outside Mecca. It's about 20, 25 miles outside of Mecca. They found a rock with writing on it. And it said that the Black Stone was moved in the 690s to, 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 to Mecca. Um, could I ask one, one, final, one final question? Then I need to, because I've been taking notes, I need to think about what you're saying. You need to give me a week or two to think about it. Would, would that be okay? If you take it 
anytime. You can come back anytime. That's not a problem. Oh, well, I'd rather you, as there's three of you and there's one of me, I don't have a family. I can fit in around you. You just let me know. Give me a day or two notice of a precise okay. time you want to speak to me. That That's okay. the easiest solution. You you just don't ask me. Just tell me as long as it's never on a Monday because I'm always oh. busy every second from the moment I get up on, on, on Monday. Um, the final verse is, is the Surah, the Divorce. And if my pronunciation is wrong, correct me. Surah al-Tak, the divorce? Surah Talak. Talak, Talak, thank you. I'll, I'll oh. underline the L to Talak. Uh, sorry, uh, what is the Surah number? It's 65, sir. Thank you. And it's verse 4, which puzzled me. Verse 4. Okay. Yep. Okay. And those of your women, as have passed the age of monthly courses, for yeah. then the idda, the prescribed period before remarriage, yeah. if you have doubts uh, about their periods, is three months. Yeah. And for those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, their idda's, idda is three months, likewise, yeah. except in the case of death. And yeah. for those who are pregnant, whether they are divorced or whether their husbands are dead, their idda is until they lay down their burden. And whoever yeah. fear, fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make his matter easy for him. Again, I, yeah, I'm i not a Quranic expert, sir. I'm just learning. I certainly, you know, um, would not have anywhere near your knowledge of the Hadith. But this has always been interpreted in the Hadith of Bukhari, to my knowledge, sir, that uh -huh. you have three groups of people here Women who've p had the menopause, so they 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 yeah. don't have the monthly courses. Yeah. Secondly, uh, girls or women who are so young, they haven't reached puberty. That's why they have no courses. Yeah. And then thirdly, you have pregnant women, and when it yeah. says they lay down their burden, I think that means they give birth. Well, so there's a three month period well, where after where they could be divorced, and the idda is three months before they can remarry. My problem is with the prepubescent girls, that you can marry in Islam a prepubescent girl, have sex with her, divorce her, and then there's a three-month waiting period where she married before she marries another man. Uh, I have problems with that, sir. Many of our uh, scholars and the Quran, as Quran, and for those young, your women who have no hope of menstruation, so uh, where the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the women, uh, the girls, those who are not in puberty, where Quran is discussing, Quran is not discussing about them. Um, but Muhammad married Aisha, who you've mentioned previously, when she was six. Yeah. And in the Hadith of Bukhari, it says that she was playing on her swing with her dolls. Yeah. She was allowed but to have dolls because she was so was young, at, she hadn't reached puberty. At, at, at the age of six, there was nikah. And when Rasulullah wasallam, she came to the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at that time she was, in some narration it is ten, and some narration it is nine. And because Arabs, still, if you see the Eight, Arabs, because eight or nine. She consummated her marriage with Muhammad, who was 54, when she was 8 or 9. Is that correct? Sorry? She consummated her marriage with Muhammad when Muhammad was 54 and she was 8 or 9. Yeah. I have problems with that, sir. I feel that's immoral. Uh, in Arab world, and still, if you see it, they are used to, because they're... Uh, in, in the UK, in Pakistan, and in all these countries... They are, have a very different environment, uh, different uh, uh, body language as compared to the Middle East and those uh, people, those who are living. They are uh, uh, women, the uh, children, the girls, they, and they, uh, concern, uh, they are confirmed there in the puberty age, in the age of nine or in the age of ten. The puberty age, the menstrual, the menstrual uh, periods, they are, they, uh, it is starting in their early ages because of their weather. And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam, when the cow was solemnized in the year uh, when she was six years old, 
and Rasul Akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam after that when Rasul Akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam uh, when she came in the house uh, Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha she was nine years old or eight years old but she was in the age of puberty I does it say could you actually give me the actual reference next time we speak yeah. Can you get me the actual reference? In fact, text me, because I'm going to have to spend a lot of time, maybe not a week, maybe two or three weeks looking at this before we okay. speak again. Just, um, you, you can send me a text. Don't quote Bukhari. Just give me the references. I know how to go online and, and to look it up. It's going to take me some time to look at this. Online is not, uh, in our opinion... Google and those things are not a, a better way because uh, sometimes they uh, uh, these are things are not being as rich in Islamic source and references and they are their references sometimes they are very different. Well, we are, well, if, but, if you, well, if you wish to buy me the Hadith of Bukhari and a set of Islamic literature and spend a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand pounds, I'll happily accept it. But and if you don't do that, then I have to go and Google, and there are websites where you can look at the whole of the Hadith of Bukhari. I can buy you that, but you all know. No, I, I said that tongue in cheek. I'm not wanting you to spend your money on me. I said that tongue in tongue in tongue in cheek. There are, there, there are, there are. I buy it for you, but the problem is that that all those stuff it is in Arabic. Uh, it, it is no use for you because you can't. No, 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 no. They they have been translating it since the nineteen seventies, but some of the Pakistani translations of Bukhari into English, they have made changes to the original text. So, for instance, in one version that was translated, Aisha. Instead of being uh, on playing with dolls on her swing at the age of yeah. eight or nine, they said she was eighteen or nineteen and playing with dolls on her swing, which I think is highly unlikely that a 19, no, eighteen or nineteen year old would be playing with dolls. Was eight or nine. Uh, when uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi he was in uh, traveling. Uh, maybe you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean. I, Sorry, I mean, are you aware of the damage done to young girls if they have, I don't wish to be crude, but if they have sexual relations before puberty? I, I've heard stories that um, there are young girls who are forced into prostitution. So, and the male semen, it's got mm. no way of being flushed out on a regular basis. It will find a way to sort of stay inside the young girl and congeal, and it can turn into maggots. So the young girl can literally have maggots inside her private part if she is engaged in regular sexual activity. Um, it is a different scenario, but uh, uh, this is uh, in respect to other these things. But Islam it doesn't allow anybody to, in 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 the age of puberty. Uh, she is not uh, in uh, she, she is not in the puberty age, and before puberty, uh, Islam. Uh, doesn't allow anybody uh, that uh, they are going to be uh, have a marriage, but uh, this for the special special specification. Uh, as I told you, in Arabs, special uh, still they have their same uh, habit there because their girls are in a special temperature. In Pakistan, they uh, always uh, uh, marriage uh, take place in the age of eighteen, nineteen, or more than. The nobody because in uh, their uh, temperature is totally different from our temperatures. In the cold areas, it is not possible. But in Arab world, if you see the girl, uh, uh, if she ages uh, a nine year old or eight year old, you see that she is a. Uh, 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 you you will see that she is she resembles to a, a, a fifteen or sixteen year uh, year age uh, type of a girl. So in Arab they have, uh, but now in uh, scholars and everybody they have uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. As you you must know that because you you have a lot of knowledge about Islam, and you must know. Imam no, Abu I Abu. don't. I but I I'm listening to all sorts of different people, um, from all sorts of different sources. Um, one of the people, one of the people I don't like very much is Mohammed Hijab. Have you heard of him? A great big guy who shouts. Sorry, uh, I haven't heard it. Muhammad Hijab. He's got a YouTube channel with about a million subscribers. Sorry. <laughs> I no, sorry. okay, okay. Well, he seems to be very, very popular. 
Um, he's making all sorts of claims about Islam. Um, go, going back to Surah 65, verse 4, it does talk about those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, i.e. they haven't reached puberty. Um, I mean, are you also aware that even if a girl did have puberty, you know, early, um, say she started puberty a little bit earlier at the age of nine or ten, um, giving, getting pregnant and trying to give birth at that age could kill the girl because her hips haven't widened. And so it's difficult to, to push the baby out because the hips aren't wide enough. Is it called the cervix? The, um, I don't know, the hole in the bone that the baby has to go through. It's just not big enough. And oh, so that's... in the past, many girls would, would, would die in um, birth. And one of the reasons why many people used to die hundreds of years ago, not just in the Middle East, but in Europe as well, was they had sexual relations too early. They got pregnant and their bodies weren't designed to give birth at the age of, you know, 10, 11 or 12. It's very damaging thing, to young girls. Thing, Robert, you've got to... Um, uh, a lot of people, uh, humans evolve, okay, over yes. time. About 1,500 years ago. Yes. All right? There's a lot of um, stories about Roman emperors who used to marry their sisters, okay? That was Nero. <laughs> yeah, whoever yeah. it was, there are stories, and now nobody would agree with that, right? And human bodies evolve over time. Um, so what the custom was, local tradition or custom was, we can't comment on that, okay? Yes. So, number one, we can only look at the narrations that have come down. And being a prophet, no prophet can do anything wrong, okay? Allah, yes. Allah has made them all innocent. So even Adam and Eve eating what they ate in paradise and coming down to earth, was something that happened with the will of Allah so that they could come and inhabit the earth, okay? So, yes, it was regarded from a prof prophetic point of view, it was a big disobedience that they did um, from the command of, of the command of Allah, but Allah himself has made all the prophets innocent, okay? So they would never, ever do anything that would be damaging to somebody, either emotionally or physically, okay? That's one thing that we have to note. Well, look, thank you very much to three of you gentlemen for speaking to me. Um, I've taken a lot of notes as you've been talking. Okay. Give me some time to think about this, and then we can we can talk again. Okay, lovely. How long, how long would you like? Two weeks? Yeah, yeah, about two weeks. That'd be, that'd be great. And But okay. make sure... When you want to speak again, I think it's been partly my fault because I brought out three different topics and we got sidetracked onto the Hadith. Maybe best to choose one topic next time. Do you think that we'd achieve yes. more with one topic? And things with politics, you've got to know politicians and rulers have always interfered with religions. Whether it's been Judaism, whether it's been Christianity, whether it's been Islam. Um, you, you've had the Mughal kings, they interfered with Islam. They tried to change Islam into a new religion. And it always happens, okay? And that's how you got the Church of England separated from the Catholic Church, okay? So th these are the kind of things, I mean, we can discuss them, Yes. but it's something that happens, and yes. politicians yes. and rulers will always interfere. Yes, yes. And just to correct something but, I said, it was the Emperor Caligula, not Nero, who married his sister. Yeah, I think, I think there's more than one emperor that's done that. Uh, just probably. To in the family. Yeah, they were rather crazy, weren't they? OK, well, look, thank you very much to the three of you. Um, okay. you is it Salaam Alaikum, I say, in, to say goodbye? Yes. Salaam Alaikum. Bye-bye. Well, All right. It's been nice talking to you, OK? Nice to you, speaking to the three of you, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.